Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Layla and in today's video I'm giving y'all an update on my sabbatical prep. This is month number six. If this is the first video that you're watching of mine or the first that you've heard of a sabbatical on my channel, then I suggest checking out a couple of videos that I have on my sabbatical prep. I first posted about this maybe in October of 2023 and said that I want to prep from then for about 18 months so that I can take my business full time. In these update videos, I just talk about the happenings from the last month, specifically related to finances and my sabbatical. Uh, I feel like they're a little bit more informal, um, just kind of me chatting. So let me go ahead and get started. Um, first thing I wanna mention is that in March, I did receive my bonus from my full time job. So that's exciting. I, that's something that occurs every March. Um, I've been with the company for two years now, and this is the second bonus that I've received from them. I've already mentioned my bonus in a couple of videos, but the total was like 3,400 something dollars. And this was a 5% bonus, 5% of my salary from 2023. I contribute 32% of my salary to my 401k. And because of that, the bulk of that paycheck went to my 401k and then also taxes. So really, I only saw like a thousand something from that. And really, I put it all to savings. Something else that happened in March is I filed my taxes. This is something I've also mentioned in a couple of videos, but I did end up owing federal taxes and quite a bit more than I was expecting to, but nothing too crazy. I've already paid for it. I've cash flowed it. I'm grateful that I was able to do that. So I ended up owing $2,311 in federal taxes. And I do always make quarterly estimated tax payments throughout the year. And this year for 2023, I was intentionally paying less toward my taxes so that I would not be owed too much money because last year, like for 2022, they held up my money for quite some time, but it still didn't really end up working out exactly as I planned because I received a refund from the state of Georgia. And I already got that luckily. So it took about a week to get that. And then I already paid my 2,311. If you look at my income for 2023 though, that's not too bad. Like I was able to write off quite a bit, just contributing to my 401k. And then my business expenses really helped to lower my tax burden. It was just kind of a bummer because I knew that going into April, I wouldn't be able to save as much because I ended up cash flowing that payment, but it's all right. Now I'm gonna hop back to talking about work actually because work really picked up. We were pretty slow on work for several months. I think it's just the market, like the tech space is really weird. That's why you're seeing people like having a hard time finding jobs in the tech industry and stuff or uh, losing jobs. I would say at least last year, there were a lot of layoffs occurring. But then end of February and then throughout March, we really picked up, which is a good thing. Like we had a lot of client work to do, a lot of billable hours. Um, but for me, at the same time, it's not, uh, it just becomes a little bit more stressful. And I say that because it wasn't just working my like 8.30 to 5.30 time or 8.30 to 5, whatever it is that, I, that I'm working. There were several times in March where I had to work after hours because when we build something in Salesforce, just by the way, I'm a Salesforce consultant. I sometimes I still get that question, but I have several videos talking about it. But as a Salesforce consultant, we build things in sandboxes. So this is like a testing environment and it's not going to affect their customers. It's not going to affect the end users, like the employees and stuff. But when we push those things that we built into their pr production environment, like what they actually use for their business, that typically has to occur after hours because you don't want anybody like in the system or things happening that, you know, if we make a change, then it could affect their work stream. So there were multiple nights that I had to do that. There was one week that I had to work after 5 p.m. three times that week, which was just very frustrating. There was one night that I was working until 9.30. And yes, it allows me to like I'm allowed to have a slower day, like I can, you know, take a break in the middle of the day or I can work less on a Friday or something, but it doesn't usually work out like that. Like, yes, the hours that I'm actually putting into work do get reduced, uh, not overall, like it's still gonna be 40 hours, but like I'm working less throughout the day, but I still kind of have to be on, like I still have to be on Slack and make sure there's no questions that come up. Or if, you know, if I have a meeting, like I have to make sure I attend that obviously. So it's like, <sighs> you can't truly be off for 
those time periods. So um, yeah, overall it was just a bit much and that's also why I slowed down on posting YouTube videos. Like if you look at how many videos I posted in March compared to the past few months, it was much lower. I think I was just doing like two videos per week compared to my three. Um, I think one week I even just put up my Transfer Tuesday. I don't know, I could be wrong, but it was definitely slower on that end and I was like, I just, I can't right now. Um, physically and mentally, it was like, I don't have time to film this, I'm not gonna have time to edit this, so like, I hopefully y'all will understand and obviously the world didn't end, so it was fine. The other thing though, which is more exciting, is that business also picked up. So I had multiple new clients apply for working with me one-on-one. -on -one. I do always have spots open, so if you are interested in learning how to budget, creating a budget with me, if you need guidance on coming up with the best way to pay down your debt, how to save money, etc., then definitely check out my offerings. That's always linked down below. But y'all already know, like this this whole series, that I'm like the sabbatical prep, this is also I can take my business full time. I really want the coaching to grow. I really want my YouTube channel to grow. So that was so exciting for me. I actually had my highest earning month from one-on-one -on -one sessions in March. Like I've never made that much money from coaching before. So that was super exciting for me. Um, but that, that also made me much busier, you know? So not only was I busier from work, but also busy with my business. At the end of March, I did have a little staycation. So I decided to take the last week of March off of work and I just stayed home. Now I did end up having three appointments that week, uh, which was kind of annoying. Like I live pretty far now from everywhere that I go to appointments. So it was a lot of traffic and a lot of driving, which led to a lot of headaches. Like I would say Maybe 40% of the time that I was off, I had a headache, which I just, I suffer with headaches pretty frequently, but that was a bummer because it's like, I'm off of work. I don't, I don't want a headache, but at least I was able to like rest instead of having like forced to work, you know? It was very nice to be able to do that. I haven't done that in quite some time. I, th I think the last time I took a staycation was 2020 and they're quite a bit different than taking an actual vacation because when you travel or take a vacation, it's usually still pretty tiring. You know, either you're switching time zones or you're doing a lot more adventurous things. You're hiking, you're swimming, you're in the sun, and then you get back and you're super exhausted because of all of those things. But with the staycation, I feel like I was able to actually rest and recover. Was it enough? No, absolutely not. Like a week is not going to fix the burnout that I feel at this point. Uh, but it was nice and I'm grateful I was able to do that. Did I have a whole laundry list of things that I wanted to do and should have done? Yes. Did I get those all done? No, not even close. And I was also quite upset about that. Like it was giving me, um, it was kind of stressing me out and I was trying to just like give myself grace and not be so anxious about it because I knew that, you know, I, the, the rest and recovery of my staycation was really important too. Um, but I was bummed to not be able to finish all of the things that I really wanted to do that week. I tend to always do that, like overestimate what I think I can get done in X amount of time. And then, you know, it's you're like four days in and nothing's done yet. <laughs> but I did still get quite a bit done with my business. So that was exciting. I had some client calls. Um, I did a lot of reading. I did some, I didn't do any crocheting actually. I don't think I did any crocheting that week because more so I was like wanting to read. I took quite a few naps. I spent time with my boyfriend, just like watching TV. We did some yard work one of the days. So it was just really nice to, to have that and um, makes me really look forward to <laughs> having that forever, like full time. Now my final update that's related to finances is that I did open another credit card in March. I was shocked that I even did this because I, I think I opened one, I think it was January that I opened my city double cash card. That was for my business though, um, but it is still under my name. Like it's not under my business name because it's not a business card. So when I applied for this, I, how did I see this? I was looking up offers of credit cards. This is what I do on, you know, you guys know that I look up like account bonuses or credit card cash back because I like to get a little bit of extra cash here and there. So I was just looking at some of the best cards right now and came across, I always go to NerdWallet's website. I think they're one of the like, they have it organized nicely. You can see what the bonus is, what their uh, reward system looks like and stuff like that. So the other reason though, why I was looking into a credit card is because I have a larger expense coming up. Like I'm gonna pay $1,000 for something and I have the cash saved for it. It's a, a beauty purchase actually, a procedure I should say, or like a treatment. 
it's gonna cost a thousand dollars and I knew that that was coming up like I had my appointment set and stuff and so I was like hey if I can if I'm gonna spend a thousand dollars I might as well get a credit card where I have to spend quite a bit of money and then I can get a bonus and, and make more money off of it so that's why I was looking to and then I stumbled across US Bank on that list which is not a bank that I like I've seen it but not one that I've really looked into before but they had a bonus for $250 after you spend $2,000 in the first three months I believe and then they had 6% cash back at like two stores of your choice including amazon.com, home depot, walmart, like you get to select every quarter which two stores you want 6% cash back on and that's like up to $1,500 of spend per quarter and like I'm not going to spend $1,500 on amazon or any of those stores so I was like, okay, that's that's a good deal. And then you can also choose a 3% category. One, one thing from the 3% category, including gas, and then there's like some other things as well, I can't remember. But I applied for this card, and as it was like, you know, spinning, I was like, I'm they're not gonna accept it. There's like no way, because I just opened a credit card, but I did get approved, and I was excited about that. $10,000 credit limit, y'all know I'm, I'm never gonna, <laughs> like I'm not gonna spend that. But um, yeah, just, pretty crazy that that happened and it was kind of a uh, like whatever I'll just go for it if I don't get it and that's fine but I'm very glad I did because I think it's a pretty good card overall it also lights up like if you do a tap to pay it lights up like there's a little LED light in there thought that was cool um, but my two six percent stores are amazon.com as well as Walmart just because I wanted to put Home Depot, but I feel like I've bought everything that I need from Home Depot for my garden. And then Walmart, I know that there may be some things that I'll end up buying for the house from there. So we'll see. I can change it next quarter. And then the 3% category, I selected gas. Yeah, that was very exciting for me. I don't know if there's a referral program with it, but if there is, I will link it down below. If not, I'll put just a regular link to that card because I thought it was pretty cool. Of course, as y'all know, if you're not responsible with credit cards, please don't don't open it. Don't worry about it. Don't apply. But, but if you're like me and like to, you know, open cards on a regular basis so you can take advantage of bonuses and the rewards that they offer, then I suggest checking it out because I thought it was a, a pretty good card. Oh, I guess the other thing to mention is that I finished my travel sinking fund. Uh, the goal that I had there was originally 5,000, but ended up bumping that up to 6,000. And in March, I was able to finish that $6,000 travel sinking fund. So that was very exciting because I didn't expect to do that. It's really because I earned more from my business, the, the coaching, and then also the bonus that I received from work. That, that really, really helped. And now I have moved on to just putting money toward my emergency fund. I still am not sure if that's like where I want to focus Focus, but right now that is where I've been putting my savings and if I need to move things around then I can. I feel like at this point my emergency fund is kind of just like general savings so if I wanted to move it around I could or it's just there as backup so for now that's that's where I'm gonna keep saving. Okay I believe that is it. Let me know if y'all have any questions otherwise thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.